A very good morning to you my dear sisters and brothers and welcome to Carmelite a reflection on the day's readings. Let us invoke the name of the Trinity before we begin our reflections. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, today is the 13th of October, Sunday, and we are celebrating the 28th Sunday in ordinary time. For a gospel passage, we have that beautiful episode of the rich young man taken from Mark chapter 10 verses 17 to 30. Let us now meditatively and reflectively listen to the gospel passage. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time as Jesus was setting out on his journey a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him good teacher what must i do to inherit eternal life and jesus said to him why do you call me good no one is good except god alone you know the commandments do not murder do not commit adultery do not steal do not bear false witness do not defraud honor your father and mother and he said to him teacher all these i have kept from my youth and jesus looking at him loved him and said to him you lack one thing go sell all that you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me disheartened by the saying he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples How difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God And the disciples were amazed at his words But Jesus said to them again Children how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God and they were exceedingly astonished and said to him then who can be saved jesus looked at them and said with man it is impossible but not with god for all things are possible with god peter began to say to him see we have left everything and followed you jesus said truly i say to you there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ Dear sisters and brothers once John was sharing with his friends that his credit card has been stolen and it's almost 2 weeks now and the friend was very much concerned and asked John if he had already registered a police complaint to which John smilingly replied no friend i haven't registered a police complaint because the thief who stole my credit card spends much less than my wife money can make us money can break us this is the fact of our daily life because our daily life in the modern world revolves around money we work to earn money we spend restless nights calculating how we can increase it and we go through anxious moments as we plan how best to spend it we spend money to get more money 
In today's gospel, an unnamed man approaches Jesus and inquires about what he must do to inherit eternal life. His intentions, anyhow, is very good and it's a noble one. Jesus replies that the one must follow the commandments of the law of Moses. The man acknowledges that he has observed all of these since his childhood. Jesus then says that only one thing is lacking. He must give his possessions to the poor and follow Jesus. And this leaves the man in sadness. And Mark tells us that this is because he had many possessions. Well, friends, now Jesus offers two requirements to the wealthy man who approaches him. First, he must give up his possessions. Throughout history, some Christians and believers in Jesus Christ have taken this literally. This example witnesses to us a radical commitment to the gospel of Jesus. People have sought to explain the meaning intended by the word possessions as those things that prevent one from following Jesus. Christians have generally understood that at the last and at the least, following Jesus requires that believers hold material possessions loosely and remain vigilant against seeking security in accumulating them. Well, the second requirement Jesus makes to this man is the invitation which he extends to all would-be disciples. Follow me. Jesus very much wants this man to be his disciple. We believe that the Christian faith is one in which each believer is in a personal relationship with Jesus. Just as this gospel tells us that Jesus loves the man and is sad when he departs, so too Jesus loves us and is saddened when we show signs of negligence in following him. Jesus in the gospel today invites us to re-examine our attitude towards money and wealth and to have a proper disposition towards it. This discourse of Jesus on wealth is prompted by the encounter between Jesus and the rich young man, as Matthew 19 would have it, who wanted to inherit eternal life. The man was not able to positively respond to the invitations of Jesus because he was possessed by his own possessions. We do know that Jesus did have access to funds. When the gospel speaks of Judas Iscariot, they also refer to him as one who had charge of the common fund. So, Jesus and his company did have some amount and yet, Jesus would make statements like, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Furthermore, in the story of the rich man and Lazarus, the rich man is punished for his indifference and the poor man is exalted for his forbearance. And finally, in today's gospel, Jesus says, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. Dear sisters and brothers, we are living in a world and in a society governed by profit-oriented market economy and are constantly bombarded by consumerist economy. We too have gradually become a part of the society that uses people and loves things and we are strongly tempted to draw our identity from our possessions. In other words, identifying our being with our having. Jesus reminds us today that such an attitude or style of living is detrimental for our spiritual growth. We are challenged to reprioritize our value system before it is too late. We need to reflect today on three important aspects. A. Accept the primacy of God and his kingdom. What does that mean? The repeated message of Jesus is very clear. Seek first the kingdom of God. What is it that occupies the core of our hearts? Is it our wealth and possessions? Is it our fame and achievements? Is it our human securities? 
Jesus simply challenges these ephemerals and invites us to give God prime place in our lives. Why? Because money can buy us a cozy bed but not sound sleep. Money can buy us a variety of food but not the peaceful ambience to enjoy our meal. Money can buy us a house but not a home of loving people. Money can buy us books but not the gift of knowledge and wisdom. B. Use things and love people. We live in a use and throw society. We open up cans and we throw them. We use ballpoint pens and then we throw them. Gone are the days of fountain pens that we used for years. We full pull out facial tissues and we use and throw them. And we also tend to use people and later throw them. We go steady with our girlfriend or our boyfriend for a few months. We use them and we find absolutely no problem in dumping them. Instead of using things, we love them. I love my car. I love my dog. I love my clothes. On the other hand, we tend to use people. Someone is important to me as long as, I, as they are useful to me. We have no time for our elderly parents. And we debate about assisted suicides. The word of God invites us again to prioritize. Yes, to use things and love people. C. Be careful not to be possessed by our own possessions. If our identity as human beings is locked into our possessions, then when we lose our possessions, what will, we, what will become of our identity? On the other hand, we need to accept the truth that our identity comes from the fact that we are created in the image and likeness of God, that the kingdom of God is within us. The unnamed man in the gospel of today was not able to respond to his heart's deepest desire because of his shallow desire for his possessions. And he remains unnamed without an identity. On the other hand, the disciples who left everything and followed Jesus, we know their names even today. Their identity comes from their relationship with Jesus. Indeed, they were given a hundredfold. It is always hard to let go of something or even harder, someone that has been much a part of our lives. This is so because it is in our human nature to cling on what is familiar, comfortable, secure and to resist what might disturb or upset the existing order and the status quo. This is what happened to the rich young man in the gospel story. On the face of it, he was a good and honorable man. He ticked all boxes. He kept all commandments. He did not steal. He did not cheat. He did not lie. He did no harm to anyone. He honored his father and mother. He was a dream child. Well, not as far as the gospel was concerned. When Jesus challenged him to go home and sell his possessions, give the money to the poor and follow him, the young man revealed his true character. He could not part with his wealth and security. He could not accept the radical demands of discipleship. He walked away sad and disappointed because of his attachment to his status as a rich young man. Brothers and sisters, even Jesus felt deeply sorry for him because the young man had missed the opportunity to outgrow himself. He had chosen his comfort zone and self-interest. He had refused the invitation of Jesus to experience an alternative mode of existence. On that, one that is based on trust and shared life rather than accumulation and personal security. He was like that older brother in the parable of the prodigal son. His religious observance was only a facade. Scratch the surface of both the elder brother and the rich young man in today's gospel, we find in them a stifled, stagnated and small-hearted person. 
This was what the early Christians community community did. They abandoned the default position of self-interest and embraced radical communion. They shared their possessions and made sure that no one was left behind. They formed an intentional community of sharing in common with each other and looking after the most vulnerable. Friends, discipleship is a journey that demands courage because it forces us to abandon security in favor in favor of vulnerable trust, self-interest in favor of passion for justice and preferential option for the for the God's poor. Let us then pray that we may have the courage to live our discipleship without counting the cost. May the teaching and the example of Jesus guide us as we endeavor to build relationships and communities that mirror the reign of God. Let us end our reflection with a short prayer. Lord, help us to realize that the bliss and peace that comes from you is our greatest treasure. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the responsorial psalm today is a request that God be the source of wisdom, understanding and teaching for all of God's servants. As God bestows these gifts on the people who invoke God's name, they are given kindness, joy and prosperity. Let's pray that psalm now. Your response, fill us with your merciful love, O Lord, and we shall exult. Fill us with your merciful love, O Lord, and we shall exalt. Then teach us to number our days, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Turn back, O Lord, how long show pity to your servants. Fill us with your merciful love, O Lord, and we shall exalt. At dawn, fill us with your merciful love. We shall exult and rejoice all our days. Give us joy for the days of our affliction, for the years when we looked upon evil. Fill us with your merciful love, O Lord, and we shall exalt. Let your deed be seen by your servants and your glorious power by their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Give success to the work of our hands. O oh, give success to the work of our hands. Fill us with your merciful love, O Lord, and we shall exalt. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Pray for God's blessing now. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brother and sister, we thank Reverend Father Ratan Almeida for sharing his reflection with us today. We had two days charismatic conventions under the banner Oasis 2024 and hence I was not able to send the audio reflection. Everything went on well. Thank you for your prayers. Today we have the blessing of vehicles from morning 8 30 to 5 in the evening, you are most welcome to bring your vehicles to be blessed. And we remember all those who are celebrating their birthdays, especially Fiona De Costa from Bajpe, Mangalore, Genevieve Pinto from Puttur, presently in Nigeria, Melrisha Melson Quadras from Derebail, Rosario Joseph Pinto from Mudbidri, Ludi Rebello from Dubai, Tanya De Souza from Navi Mumbai, Tony Thomas Jerry Desa from Mumbai. Wish you all a happy birthday. God bless you. And we pray for the departed soul of Carmen Pinto from Lower Bindur, Mangalore, Jelson Tillis from Atturu, Karkala, and Babina Rodriguez from Anderi, Mumbai. May the Lord grant them eternal rest. That's all for today, my dear friends. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.